Along with the NHS, the housing crisis is set to be one of the election-defining questions next year. The government has consistently failed to meet its own building targets year after year. And as we discussed before the intermission, with record levels of immigration, demand is rising and therefore prices will remain high. But the Green Quango, Natural Britain headed by Tony Juniper, has today been accused of blocking the building of over 150,000 houses owing to pollution regulations. The Quango, which is part of the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, was criticised by the Home Builders Federation, which said the nutrient neutrality guidelines deriving, wait and you won't believe this, from a European Court of Justice ruling from 2018 when we had already voted to leave, stifled the much needed building across Britain. So could these regulations be the source of Britain's housing woes, or are they a much needed line of defence for our rivers? Well, still with me is my esteemed panel, journalist and author Michael Crick, and the Conservative MP Miriam Cates. Michael, I heard Mr Juniper on the wireless this morning. And when that figure was put to him, he said, I don't recognise that figure. Isn't that one of the weaseliest set of words politicians, and I've used them myself, ever <laughs> used when the figure is pretty close and they just don't want to fess up? Yeah, uh, and uh, it may well be that there, there, there is a figure near that. But it's interesting that these newspapers that um, uh, seem to be complaining about this are the same newspapers that are also complaining and indeed campaigning on the whole issue of pollution and sewage in our rivers and on our beaches and so on. And we, uh, we do need regulations in this country. It's the lack of res regulations, uh, for instance, that led to the Grenfell fire, the lack of regulations or the uh, not applying regulations properly that leads to the building of houses in floodplains and people's houses being flooded. So there have to uh, be regulations. Uh, but uh, uh, actually, Grenfell yes. was a lot of mixed regulations because you had the cladding put on to meet environmental standards so that the heat loss was lower, combined with a lack of fire our safety regulations, and then this idiotic idea that the fire brigade told people to stay in their houses when a building was on fire. Well, clarity of regulations is important, of course, and that's clearly what we need to hear. I mean, I, I, you know, surely you're not saying, OK, we'll have as many nitrates and phosphates in our rivers and, uh, 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 as, as you like, um, and people can, uh, and, and all the ramifications in terms of medical effects that that has... Are you really saying we'll, have, we'll allow that? I mean, you're a Conservative. I'm a Surely conservative. you believe in <laughs> conservation as part of it. But I also believe in yes. building houses people live in. Yes, exactly. And isn't the problem here? It's not that anybody's objecting to having high standards of, of quality in our rivers. It's the fact that the building of the houses is not the contributing factor to the pollution. It's actually farming and Victorian sewers. And so it's almost a ridiculous obstacle to put in the way of building houses because it doesn't make any difference. Yes, let's have strong you know, pollution regulations for our rivers, but it doesn't need to stop us from building housing and that's well, why this story is quite ridiculous. Well it seems to me that there must be more to this story than meets the eye and it's an obvious one for government to sort out. Well, I think that the various departments is... within government well, have got to come together and the Prime Minister's got to knock heads together and say this is absurd. I, I think this is um, the quangocracy yeah. that is left not plugged into anything. Mm. When we're in the EU it was plugged into the bureaucracy, it got the orders coming down from Brussels, this is what it had to do. We left the EU, it was unplugged, mm. and now it doesn't take orders from anybody. Mm. They're just free to issue edicts as they like. They're not democratically accountable. Okay. It's, therefore, they are able to stop things, and politicians like us can't get them going so again. Well, we, well, that's we... why it's important uh, not to get rid of all the law that we inherited from Europe in a mad rush, exactly. as well, you would like that to This isn't actually... <laughs> This has come from an ECJ ruling in 2018. But I think, you know, you're right, Jacob. The problem that we've got into is this idea that elected politicians bad, quangos and officials good. Well, that, that's ridiculous. Elected politicians can be got rid of every five years. What better election... motivation is there and, to do the right thing? And also, Ju Ju Juniper was on speaking like a second-rate politician, that he wasn't speaking well, like a high-minded regulator. He, was, he came up with this terrible line that there are a million planning permissions outstanding, so it's not our fault. A million planning permissions is about three and a half years of building. Of course you've got a pipeline of planning permissions. So if he's going to behave like a politician, he oughtn't to have unaccountable well, authority. this is absurd. Uh, parliament is sovereign, right? You are both members of parliament. This building seems to be overrun with uh, members of parliament, all from the same party. Uh, you are able to, if you wish, and the government, if they wish, you have a, a large majority to do something about this. You can sack Tony Juniper if you don't like what he's doing. I suspect the issue is incredibly complicated complicated and not as simple as it is presented in the press today and that clearly we do need some regulation in this field. But, you're, you're, but you 
can't blame it on the quangos. You appointed the quangos, and you could... Well, you... actually, the quangos set up when we were in the European <laughs> Union, and they were well, required right. you, you have by the EU power. law. You and have if, we the got power rid of, to... if we got rid of EU law, as I was proposing, then the quangos' power would be cut. Think, but you think... want to defend that, so you... No, have... I, I, what I'm saying is one should be careful you about abolishing all these laws but, but overnight. It, it, it's a fair point, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. But the problem with quangos is, whilst on paper they sound great because they're full of experts and they're supposedly neutral, although no group is politically neutral, but they have one job. And Natural England's one job is to protect the environment. Great. But they don't have to take into consideration all the other factors yeah. that politicians do. And, you know, for example, there's no way a politician would stand up in the House of Commons and say we're going to scrap 160,000 new homes because of this ridiculous rule about pollution that's actually got nothing to do well, with new homes. Quangos only have to consider one thing, and that yeah. doesn't make them good at making decisions no, well, that I, have I, no I remember effect. that there was a man called William Waldegrave, uh, who you will be familiar with. I who know well, MP, Somerset neighbour. Absolutely. And who in the 1990s, was um, uh, had this thing called the next steps where large chunks of government were going to be farmed off to these independent agencies and the central government and parliament were going to take a hands-on hands-off approach now this was under a conservative government now maybe and of course conservatives again and again and again no doubt you'll be fighting it at the next list we're going to get rid of quangos but it never happens because you can't because you know that there are certain areas of life that do have to be regulated but, now it may well be yes. the rules here are absurd or need, need tweaking but in Miriam's, order to help house building. Miriam's right. Yeah. A politician has to think, we have a housing crisis, yes. we need 150, 160,000 new houses. We've got a million people coming in. You were saying that needs 500,000 houses. Well, I don't Whereas the Quango yeah. just thinks about a nitrate. Yes. And therefore is power without responsibility. Well, it is the job of ministers and cabinet committees and the cabinet, of which you were a member not long ago, to, to coordinate all of this. Now, the problem, I get the impression now that not much is going on in government or in parliament these we're, days. Um, and that's well, why you're able to come in on every evening and do this programme, and indeed your colleagues as well. Well, I mean... <laughs> but the, but the um, I I issue of the um, quangos is that they are set up independently, and their independence when challenged leads to a disproportionate political row. I mean, look at the ABR, which has been given sort of godlike status, even though all its forecasts are always wrong. Mm. But uh, there are select committees that can look into this and can coordinate this. The power is there. Come on, select committees can <laughs> do it all. You know, I, I would absolutely be in favour of getting rid of, you know, a lot of the, these quangos. But I think, go back to my first point, which is we now have this view in politics and potentially in the public mind that elected politicians are bad and do things for bad reasons and quangos are good and do things for good reasons. But quangos have become just as politicised yeah. as, as, as genuine politics. And Natural England, we're talking about this house building, but, you know, they have a very political position on land management, for example. You know, I know that from various cases in my own constituency. Yeah. They're no less political than politicians, they're just less accountable. And the idea that having more quangos are, is, is a benefit to our political system is false.